sort of how he said it because that's something that Robo created. He said it's a sort of, it's not a missile, actually it's a mortar. Oh boy. It's a mortar that hovers on top of you and the moment that your ship surface, it just makes a sort of diving move and, and falls on top of you. Right, do you want me to go over there then? And that I think is su it sucks because we all got uh, to a point that we accepted the splash damage and we also accepted the the new uh, the plasma? plasma, the plasma one, mm -hmm. but uh -uh. this is going way too far. Besides, I don't know what he was expecting the community to, uh, when he before made that torpedo that had that max range. Remember those seventies? Oh yeah. yeah, I do remember that got, one. And people got so mad with that. And now he makes a this one that I have no idea how much is the range, but I can tell you. Any of the hogs that were there could shot those, and they were going to the to the sides of the map, and they were able to cross the, the whole map. You know, mm -hmm. so if the torpedo got let's say 300, this has at least more than that. Yeah, I would say if they proceed with that, now, I gotta on, assume uh, on with the all. preview server that the feedback on that is going to be horrific. Yeah, I mean, because I don't even the most positive people in the community. Yeah, and I've watched, enough. I mean, because, you know, I've, I've seen most of the, the uh, streams. I watched most of the videos. And uh, TSM from the Forsaken Council, the guy's very positive. I mean, really, he's not a guy that comes in and bashes and, and stuff. Even he was pissed off and aggravated. And yeah, even I mean, he, Price was doing his best to be diplomatic, but he was aggravated. And so... I, I gotta think to you that with the feedback coming, they're gonna re they gotta reevaluate that, or this is gonna be another scourge issue. Yeah, the, the most mostly people were saying that this is going to be a scourge 2.0, and that's the thing that is going to happen if they don't change. And I think that at times it's it's better to have people like TSM, the mm -hmm. one that don't get aggravated, because you know if you are crying all the time, we we get used that you cry all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you only cry from time to time, is when people say, hey, listen to this guy, because he doesn't cry normally. So if he's crying now, something quite uh, wrong has to be happening. And that is what we have now. Right. We didn't... I mean, I would... No, I have not seen BP Prof say anything. You've decided but I would not to assume do it. That, that he's got to, to be irritated also. I, I just... I can't see... Oh, dear. And, he, you know, he stays pretty level-headed, too. I mean... Uh, you know, and he's another voice that people respect. So I gotta think that he would be in the same boat of being uh, irritated. I mean, what do you think? I, I don't like the the missile. To be honest with you, I think that it's a kick on on the ass to the, the community, work, right? and, it's not, and it's not nothing that was necessary there. You can. Increase the modifiers on those plasma damage in the different target. Uh, if, if you don't think that we are getting enough damage, but you cannot do those things. Oh, I think you shouldn't do it. Yeah, I agree. Completely agree. Because let's say normally in, in this was a game that in which with the skill you were avoiding damage. Now you cannot do it because first there was a the splash damage got the fade out. So the far, the, and the further you were from that target, the, the the less damage you were dealing with. Now it's not that it seems. Now it doesn't matter how far you are, you are going to get the same damage, okay? In those mm -hmm. 200, it's the range. But they saw that we were able to put the ablative armor and stuff like that and mitigate a lot of that damage. So they created the plasma. And in a way we accepted it as well. It was not welcome at first, but then said okay let's see how this goes but now it's not that now is that they have added this new one and this new one is it's unavoidable so you cannot use your gales even if it's a mortar you cannot use your phalanx it's likely that napalm missile that we got in the past mm -hmm. you know but this one so far seems that it's you cannot avoid it if it follows you <laughs> you know that the moment your surface is going to fall on top of you yeah, and, and I also don't like the fact that it takes surface ships absolutely out of it completely. And I do think that, you know, 
we should have an aspect of a surface ship that can do have compete a little bit in the raid too. Um, because I had some V2Hs I was retrofitting because I have some some um, shipyard time and I had tokens and I, I don't have anything else beyond what I'm working on right now. And uh, so I'm kind of changing them up a little bit to see if I can have another fleet to help with the raid. But with that, I mean, it would be a complete suicide mission if I brought surface in it. I mean, they would just pound them until they're dead. I wouldn't even get to the targets. Yeah, I think that uh, it's difficult to say it in a way that it's not offensive uh, to Kickside, but I think that they run out of ideas uh, yeah. to make us get damaged in a way. And they, so they made us use subs, so we don't have such an uh, spread uh, amount of choices to that they have to deal with, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, most people, if you think about it, don't have a whole lot of sub fleets. I mean, I have Nighthawks, and that's it. And well, I got the two new Hellwraiths, but most people abandoned the sub situation, what, months ago? Because they were just not even part of, I mean, they would be spotted immediately. So all of a sudden, they're back into play. And, and the thing is, uh, how much do you want to commit in building subs? Because after this raid cycle is over, are we back to them being useless again? Well, that's not true. You know that, I don't know if it's going to be January or February, but you know that those uh, Draconian Armadas are, are getting away. And the River Armadas are going to be the new source of uranium. And oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, I just came back, so I can... I, I see some some ways they do things, no? But Hold on. I don't know if the, it's always been this way the last time, the last months. But you could see that when the first raid cycle ended, on the second one, uh, one or two months later, uh, when the, uh, was the raid of the Apollo, the last one we did, the Forsaken mission changed it, and we took the last, uh, the last charges from the last from the raid before and became the Forsaken mission. So I'm going to guess that one or two months, so January, February, you could probably see the Draconian's Armada disappearing and just the River Armada showing up and those being the ones that keep you the running. So your subs have a, will have a, a, a life span longer than you expect. All right. Yeah, well, that, that, that makes me feel a little bit better. I had heard some of that, but I wasn't quite sure. So, I mean, everything we're working on will actually have some life beyond that. that at least... At least that makes me feel a little bit better about what we're doing. Yeah, besides, if depending on how you build, you have to spend the whole month building the two subs because it's, the build is for, between 14 and 18 days. Depends if you put D5s, X, or you put D4, D3, and, D, uh, and D2s. But the average is between 12, 14, and if you go with the D5s, you, you go farther than that. You go to 18 days. So you know that you have built two. If you are getting tokens, probably you are able to build a third with the tokens you got this this month. At least one more. At, unless you had something in the shipyard that you wanted to build. I, well, I, I mean, considering I'm, I'm completely caught up, we've got an extra week, which I think uh, we, which we were actually talking about that earlier. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get um, uh, the, the next one built and, and ready for VXP. Because I'm, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to, um, if I'm really going to really go after the prize in this raid because I'm not a, a base hitter. Um, so I might Lucky skip set, it, guys. just get tokens, and you know, there may be some things I need to get caught up on. But um, and you do, and do you use a, a base ward? Because maybe you want the weapon for the base ward. I'm sorry. Repeat. Can you repeat yourself? Yeah, I said, you, do you use still a base guard, or you don't have a base guard in your base? Oh, a base guard. Uh, I, you know, I do, but it needs to be updated, so that's, that's probably my next in line to, uh, to build would be a, uh, a better, some better base guard. So, yeah, that, that would, that's kind of what I was eyeing after this. So if I don't go after this, ba this new hall, which you said is, is really, is, you think it would be a good base guard? Or do you think it would, it's just going to be uh, against destroying bases? No, the well, the the hull is a uh, very resilient, so it's it's hard to kill. You don't kill mm -hmm. it fast, so it will slow. And people will not. It's uh, 
for me, this ship reminds me a lot of Hell Strike. You remember the Hell Strike? Oh yeah, yeah. Do you remember that many people put at least one in these bases as well? Yeah, I remember it that. Was, yeah, it, it was not sometimes not killing your fleet, but was slowing you enough so the rest of the fleet, the base could deal with you. So uh, I don't know if you want to skip it. Hmm, that's a good point. That's a very very good point. I didn't think about that. So so you're basically saying is maybe get it and have it be your next base guard. Uh, that, you know, that's that's a good. Uh, because if you look at those previews, you could see that the the ship was got into the to the back of the bases and it was taking a lot. I if I think it was TSM in his preview, he catch Laredo on another one. I don't remember the other one, and they were trying to kill each other. And wow, they were fighting each other. They were stunning because that weapon or that ship has an stunning effect. Uh, we don't know yet what is the. The secret because it doesn't show on the blueprint but you get your ships a stun after you get hit by that ship with that rocket mm -hmm. or that scatter gun whatever you want to call it and it was taking them a bunch to kill each other so i don't know if you want to skip it or not that's a good point I, I i didn't even look at it that way i was kind of looking at it from a standpoint of uh um you know because you have to, in this game you have to find strategic spots to skip. I mean, I, 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 unless you're going to coin the hell out of it, uh, of everything, you, you can't grab everything. So you have to find your spots when it's time to, all right, I'm not going to get this. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, and I'll jump the, into the next thing. And I find that um, a lot of people make that mistake that, that you gotta you got to be thinking ahead. you got to say, okay, do I have the time to build this because I don't I'm not want to just keep adding blueprints I can stuff that I can't build if I've got a I've got a situation where I've got two builds already stacked up then there's just no point of me getting anything else you know I, I don't because the game's moving so quickly that by the time you get two months down the road whatever you thought you were gonna build maybe there's something better for that yeah you're right with that but if you don't have the blueprints then later it happens that those two blueprints combine it, do something that you cannot do because you don't, you are missing one, you know. So one thing, because holding blueprints doesn't give you any trouble. The problem is building them. Right. If you have other projects in mind, I don't know. If you want to have uh, a track uranium base uh, fleet and you don't have it, you work on that. If you want to have, I don't know. Uh, if you have already a Forsaken mission, so you don't need to worry, you have your SAS for the raid. If you want to increase, you increase uh, the sub number or not. But you have already the fleet. So now you have, let's say, the four next months, and unless that what comes in the raid is something that you feel you need, you can you just gonna skip. Just gonna sort these. Yeah, well the uh, first time I've I've actually got a uh, I've got a rock solid Forsaken mission fleet. I've got a fleet to uh, my subs can get my uranium. Um, I have a, a. I'm still using a Rhino tank fleet to handle anything that's missile based. Um, I've got two Hellrays built, ready to go. So I'm kind of current, but uh, but base guard is my next need to get done. So I, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna definitely look at this uh, uh, this ship as, as a base guard. I, that is really some great advice, by the way. Very good advice. Yeah, and so far I don't. They, uh, is sus um, that sus susceptible to be change it, so you don't know yet how it's going to end, but so far it's 90,000 armor points, 30 minutes. Yeah, 90,000, wow. Yeah, 90,000 it was. Uh, it's likely on the line of the retribution. Uh, so, and it's 30 minutes. You don't know if it's not going to be that way, it's going to change, but if it keeps on the same line, like the retribution and the likes, and knowing that you can fit that in your defense uh, spot in the um, in the dock, and that's 50 percent extra you guys still repair have time. Well, by the so you chance. just need to prepare 50 percent because mm -hmm. you have that bonus. You're talking that about what 50 minutes at the moment, uh, unless they change it. In 50 minutes, you have 90,000 armor points repair. Wow. Well, but I still think it goes back to the point you made before, which is the fact that you're going to slow an attack fleet down on your base. Because I know from a, a 
from a, a turn standpoint, I've got everything there is to get on that. 